he says, what? Let us. And then he said, what? Something's going to happen here. He said that something has to happen because in verse 28 of chapter 1, which is still in the first world age prior to Adam, he said in verse 28, and Yahweh blessed them, and Yahweh said to them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. This is in the first earth age. Replenish the earth. Well, in order to replenish something, it had to be wiped out. You're replacing. Replenish means to replace something that had been there and was destroyed. Okay? We're, are you following me? You are, we're together, aren't we? Yeah. Are we together here this morning? Yeah. Okay? Next, please. Now, let's get into some interesting things. <laughs> It was Chai Putai, a professor at Beijing University, who led some of his students on the expedition to survey a series of interlinking caves in the Himalayan mountains in 1937. How many years ago was that? Come on, help me. 68? Okay, 68. It was said that the caves may have been artificially carved and were more like a complex system of tunnels and underground storerooms. The walls were squared and glazed as if cut into the mountain with a source of extreme heat. Now inside the caves, Professor Chai Putai found several ancient but neatly arranged burial sites. And in them, the skeletal remains of a strange people. The skeletons, measuring a little more than four feet tall, were frail and spindly with disproportionately large skulls. It is written that at first it was suggested that the remains may be of an unknown species of a mountain gorilla. Professor Chai Putai said, quote, Whoever heard of apes bury one another? As more discoveries were made in the caves, ruling out that perhaps it was apes, for on the walls of the caves were carved picturograms of the heavens, <clears throat> the sun, the moon, the stars, and the earth with lines of dots connecting them. And it was right after this that the disks were discovered. And these disks are older than the Great Pyramid in Egypt. For 20 years, the disks were stored at Beijing University, and then Professor Sum Um Nu entered into the picture. In 1962, painstakingly transcribed the characters from the disk to the paper because there was little pictures on these disks, okay? The writing was so small, he had to use a magnifying glass to see it clearly. But the discs were so old that much of the heliographics were difficult to make out. Or had been worn away by time and the elements. Now, once the characters were transcribed... the characters were transcribed, Dr. New began a very difficult task of trying to decode its message. Soon he started to make progress. Once he put a word together, then a sentence, and he then knew that he had broken the code upon the disks. Two years later, Dr. Sumnum Anai published his paper on his findings, and it was called the grooved script concerning spaceships which as recorded on the disks landed on the earth 12,000 years ago. Now this is what Dr. Nui, Nui translated from the disks. 
The Drupa, remember the people, the Drupa? I told you was the, the title. The Drupa discs tell a story of a space probe from a distant planet that crash land in the Bayan Karaula Mountains of the Himalayas. Okay, so we'd have to say, oh, well, where is this? Well, where it is, it's Shishun province. This is the home of the great giant panda. You've heard about the giant pandas of China. It's also the home of the golden-haired monkey. And the area of Shashun, okay, where these caves were found, over on the Tibetan mountain range over here, the Himalayas, is in southwestern China. Very important. This is the province of Shishun of China itself. Now, where is this located? Well, this is where it's located. This is part of massive China. But real light brown here, the tan. This is Shishun. This is the province right here over by Tibet. Now, Ixang, Ixang province is what you know as Tibet. Okay, geographically. Ixang province is Tibet. Used to be Tibet. This is the mountain range right here where Tibet banged up against Shishan. This is the mountain range of the Himalayas where the caves were found and where the disks were found and where the skeletons of the Dropa were found. Up here you have Mongolia, the Soviet Union, India down here, Pakistan over here, Afghanistan right here, okay, Burma, Vietnam, Laos over here, this is Rangoon, this is Burma, Thailand, Bangladesh, okay, this is Nepal, Bhutan, but this is the province of the so-called province of China where these discs and these skeletons were found up on this mountain range right in here. I wanted to give you the geographical setting for your mind so you understand. But what's so important about that? Well, what is important about it is here it is again as I reduced it. You can see where it's at in China. And up here is this Xiang. They call it Xiang province up here. Why is this area right here? Look how close it is right here to where this was right here. Okay? Now remember where this is in China. And remember this is another province of China. Slide it down please. And there is the Tarim Basin. There's Ixang, Tibet. And right over here would have been Xinhan. This is where the Dropa were find, found right here. You can see the Kunlung Shen mountain range here too. Here's the Himalayas running up around here. Okay. This is where the Dropa people were found about right here. Why is this so important? Why is this... Uh, area right here so vastly important to us because it's the Paymar Plateau it's the Terran Basin which is next please the cradle of civilization of our race the Terran Basin here we got Tibet again down here here's, here's the area where the Dropa were right here and right here is the Paymar Plateau where, the, where Adam was, right here, where Adam was, right here, here's the Terran Basin, this is the Garden of Eden, right here, that is talked about in our book of law and history, but I wanted you to know how close they were together, because we know that Adam was here 7,500 years ago, we know the Drupal had been here 12,000 years ago. Why don't you think about these things now? Uh, think very deep, because I'm going to be coming at you with some stuff here today. We're not here to play one and one is two, and then we'll have bingo. Okay? We're not here. And then we'll, we'll, we'll cast lots and see who gets to go to Africa as, a, as, the, uh, as the teacher or the mercenary or whatever they call him. All right? Missionary. Actually, he's a mercenary. Now, I want to point something out to you that's very important. 
extremely important. Persian, Chinese, and Indian traditions locate the Garden of Eden on the Pamar Plateau right here. Now imagine, the Persians, the Chinese, and the Indians state that this Pamar Plateau was the Garden of Eden where Adam was, where the father of our race was. Adam, to turn rough and ready, to show blushing and redness in the face, to turn red when angry. That's the description of Adam, Adam, in Hebrew. The Dropa were right over here. Here's Tibet. The Dropa were right over here. And then, of course, when the flood came, the ark would come up and it went west, 2344 B.C. Here's the migration of Noah coming off the ark and coming down into this part of the world right here. Okay? Next, please. Now, in 1937, an expedition went to the Ban Karaula, a resort mountain range which is between Tibet and China. There, a Chinese archaeologist discovered several burial sites, over 700 of them. Over 700 burial sites. Each of the 716 graves contained a strange four-foot-tall skeleton and an odd disc. The discs were about a foot in diameter and a third of an inch thick. Here's one right here. And it had a hole right in the middle, okay? Now, for those of us that are a little older, we used to have a machine that we could take a disc about a foot in diameter and it had a hole in the middle, and we could put it on what they call a table, plug it into the wall, hit a switch, and it was called a, what was it, a 78 record? Size 78? Oh, okay. Well, you're going to like this. Wait till you see what's coming. So here it is right here. It was about a foot in diameter, about a third of an inch in thickness, okay? And it had a hole in the middle. The discs were about a foot in diameter, a third of an inch thick, with a hole in the center from which spiraled out double groove markings in a continuous line of closely written characters. Close examination revealed that these grooves were a writing system. So from here, these little grooves, hold on, yeah. These little grooves were going out, spiraling out, spiraling out, spiraling out, and they had all these little characters on them, and they found out that it was a writing system on these discs that belonged to a Dropa people that was found in the caves in the Himalayas. Now, today, we don't have the 78 record, because that used to be the only old croonies in them, you know, Frank Sinatra and and all these people, but now we have another disc that records from inside, that records from inside when you start to play it, and it records outward, and they're called CDs. Is this correct? Right. CDs are a little smaller. They can only contain about 80 minutes of a sound bite. I believe it's 80 minutes. Okay? Did you get that in your history class when you were in school? No. Uh, did you hear about this? No. Oh, oh I see. Okay. Uh, next, please. Because I don't want to go into something that you've already had years ago in school, you know. <laughs> now, the occupants of the spacecraft, the Dropa, this is what it says, on the disc after they decoded them, found refuge in the caves of the mountains. And despite their peaceful intentions, the Dropa were misunderstood by members of the Han tribe who were occupying neighboring caves and who hunted down the aliens and even killed some of them. A translation of one of the Han tribe passages says, not the Dropa, the Han, quote, the Dropa came down from the clouds in their aircraft. Our men, women, and children hid in the caves ten times before sunrise. When at last the Han tribe realized that the newcomers had peaceful intentions, Today, the isolated area is inhabited by two tribes of people who, in fact, call themselves the Dropa and the Han. Anthropologists have been unable to categorize either tribe into any other known race. 
There's nothing like them on the surface of the earth anywhere. They are neither Chinese and they are not Tibetan. Both tribes are of pygmy stature, adults measuring between three foot six and four foot seven, with an average height of four foot two inches and a body weight of between 38 and 52 pounds. They are yellow skinned with thin bodies and have large eyes that are not Asian in aspect but have pale blue irises. They have thin bodies and disproportionately large heads, corresponding to the skeletal remains found in the caves in 1937. They also have sparse hair on their bodies. Next, please. Shortly after World War II, An English scientist, Dr. Carl Robin Evans, acquired one of the discs. It was purchased in northern India and was said to have come from a mysterious people called the Despa. In 1947, Dr. Robert Evans left for the mysterious land of the Despa, or the Dropa. Along the way, his Tibetan carriers abandoned him because they were terribly afraid of the Bayan Karayula, the mountain range. With tremendous effort, he managed to reach his destination. After having won the faith of the locals, Dr. Robert Evans was a, Robin Evans was assigned a language teacher in order to introduce him to the basics of the Dropa language. He learned from Lugan La, a religious guardian of the Dropa. Lugan La pointed out that the Dropa originally came from a planet in what? The serious system of the heavens. Now, the serious system. This is very important. There was another people on this earth in Africa called the Dagon people. And we'll be getting into that in a little bit. I've already got a preliminary one out. Who was and who is Dagon today? Okay? I've lectured on that about 10, 11 years ago. Now, the serious system. Sirius is the largest and most brilliant star in the heavens. It is situated in the eye of the greater dog Canis Major. Therefore, it is known as the Dog Star. It is located in the constellation of Canis Major and is 8.6 light years from Earth. Sirius is visible in the northern hemisphere in the evening sky from November through April. Sirius is over 20 times brighter than our sun and over twice as massive. Sirius is not the closest star system. The Alpha Centauri system holds this distinction. Up, please. Sirius appears blue-white in color. It is the brightest star in our sky after the sun and can be easily seen in the winter months in the northern hemisphere. And when looking at the constellation Orion, locate Orion's belt, which are the three bright stars in a row, follow an imaginary line through these three stars to Sirius, which is just above the horizon. Next, please. Here is Sirius, okay? This is the constellation Sirius. Here is Orion. You see these three stars right here? You follow a line through, straight through these three stars, and you'll hit Sirius right here in Canis Major. This entire uh, this entire star system here, Sirius, is 20 times brighter than our sun. That's where these disks said these people came from. Now, here it is again, as you're looking at it. This is the Hubble X-ray. The Hubble X-ray out in space took a picture of Sirius 8.6 light years away. This is what it looked like in the lens of the uh, Hubble telescope. And down here, we've got Sirius B. we got Sirius A and Sirius B. This is 1930. This is where they were. 1940, this is where they were. This is a straight line in the middle. These are the two planets. Here we come up to 1960. This is where they were. 1990, right? 1990, this is where they were. Sirius B and Sirius A, okay? Now, 
Next, please. And we're going to put a stop on this for lunch. I have more to teach you after we're done with lunch. Now, Dr. Robin Evans was also told that there had been two exploration missions to Earth, the first about 20,000 years ago, and the second in the year 1014. In 1014, a crash took place, leaving the survivors unable to leave the Earth again, and Dr. Carl Robin Evans died in 1974, and his report was released in 1978. Next, please. One more. It took archaeologists and scientists over two decades to decipher the text. The contents are of such great importance that the Academy of Prehistory in Beijing, Communist China, at first refused to publish the report of scientist in charge, Professor Sum Yum Nu. Backed by four colleagues, Professor Nu stated, quote, The groove writing tells of aerial vehicles that, according to the stone disk, existed 12,000 years ago. In one place, a disk reads, The Dropa came down from the clouds with their air gliders, unquote. So at this time, we're just going to take and, and hesitate for now, and we're going to finish up with the rest of this lecture after we have a bit to eat and take a break, okay? I wanted to go back and, and, and have you understand that Professor Sam Umnai and his contents of his document and the deciphering of the text of the discs was of such great importance that the, the Academy of Prehistory in Beijing at first refused to publish the report. Now, this report is available. This report is available here to substantiate what we're talking about today, which is very, very important. <clears throat> I'm just going to do a quick check here to make sure everything's on because sometime I get to going and it's not on, so we're here. And back by four colleagues, Professor Nui stated that the groove writings tells of aerial vehicles that, according to the stone disk, existed 12,000 years ago. In one place, a disk reads, the dropa came down from the clouds with their air gliders. Now, this shouldn't surprise us. I mean, Enoch was taken up on a chariot of fire, wasn't he? Uh, uh, who else was to Elijah was taken away on a chariot of fire. What's the difference if you call it a chariot of fire or an air glider? I mean, it's, it's the same thing. It went through the air and it had propulsion and had its own energy. And this was very important. All right, next, please. <clears throat> now, what I've done here is I've uh, superimposed some images for you. Uh, this is a, another one of the discs. You see the hole in the middle. Okay, and it's about a foot in diameter, about three-eighths of an inch thick. It had all little characters, hieroglyphics, all over it. It was spun from the inside out, just like a modern CD is. Here are two more of them here, okay? And this one down here is very interesting. Could you center that up on the screen for me? You'll notice here they did like a cutaway and an x-ray of this. This is the disc, the outer edge, this is the center, and you see right here it's exposing all the little characters and the markings that were on this disc, on one of the discs here. Very important. This is a language here, a written history or a written language. This is a shot of it if it were cut away, if it were cut away, this is a shot of what it looks like if you were looking, if it was cut away in half, this is the hole in the middle, and of course, the disc itself. Now up here in the left-hand corner, this picture here was taken by Dr. Robin Evans. You remember back, he was the British gentleman in 1948 who went up to talk to the Dropas into the Himalayas, and he's the one who had purchased the disc in northern India. Do you remember that in this part of the lecture? He went up, he had his camera, he took a picture. Here are two of the dropas that were still there. 
This picture was taken by Dr. Robin Evans, shows the Dropa's ruling couple. It's going to be hard to... Huipahla, he was four foot tall. And this is Vesla, three foot four inches tall. These were Dropa people who had come down. Their head is proportionately bigger than their frail bodies are. But I wanted to bring this up for the authenticity of the lecture in itself. And, you know, our people are going to be startled soon when Yahweh really starts to expose things and do things. But you're not going to be shocked. You're not going to be shocked. And, and it's very important because remember Yahweh said, let us, let us make them in our image. In our image, plural, let us. Remember we went into this in the beginning of the lecture? Who was that with Yahweh? Well, they were called Elohim. Elohim is plural for Yahweh's sons. A lot of people think it's singular, but it's plural. And the same as those angelic beings that came down and presented themselves to Sarai and to Abraham. All right? Next, please. Now, in 1968, see, I'm bringing this up in time now. I'm bringing this lecture chronology, through the time chronology, okay, from way back when the expedition was created and went there in 1937, we're bringing things up in time now for you. In 1968, that wasn't too long ago, probably about 37 years ago, the Dropa disk came to the attention of W. Satsu, a Russian scientist who republished the findings of Dr. Tom Um Nai and conducted tests on the disk that reveals some very particular properties which are. So he took it now. This is a forensic scientist, and he examined the disc. They wanted to know what the disc were made of. This is very important to what elements this disc was made of, all right? And number one, the granite discs contain high concentrations of cobalt and other metals. Now, cobalt, that's true. There's cobalt all over the earth. There's no problem with that. What else is cobalt linked with? Would you say nuclear fission? It's also linked into nuclear. Is this correct? All right. And other metals. That's probably the reason why these discs have lasted so long because of the hardness and the density that the discs are with all their little uh, characters and stuff that were inscribed so small they had to use a magnifying glass even to look at them. Now think about this. Plus to have the instruments that can carve into cobalt. Alright? <clears throat> Number two, a very hard stone indeed that would have made it difficult for the primitive people to carve the lettering especially with such minute characters. Up just a little. Thank you. And when testing a disc with an oscillograph, a surprising oscillation ry rhythm was recorded as if the scientists said they had once been electrically charged or had functioned as electrical conductors. Now this is coming out of the Soviet Union who ran the test on the discs as to what they were made of and, and what they found out about the discs. Now, it's interesting that when they, when, when they tested it with an oscillograph, that, that they had once been electrically charged or had functioned as electrical conductors is a very, very exciting and interesting situation. Now, we're talking about people way up in the mountains working with discs made of cobalt and other metals with minute characters in code on them as a written language so small, so small, they had to be looked at with a magnifying glass. Now that takes a pretty steady hand for someone to do this themselves. And besides, what instrument would they have then that they could cut into cobalt and actually make a perfect 
written language in a circle coming from the inside out like a CD operates. Next, please. This is Dr. Asatsu's paper from Russia, the scientist, from 1968. The text below is a translation of the original paper written by the Russian scientist Dr. W. Satsu and has not been altered in any way. The Dropas. And this is what he states. This is approximately 1968 to 1970 now when he released his paper. In the borderland between Tibet and China, there is a cave region of the Bayan Kara Ula Mountains. 25 years ago, remarkable finds of tablets with writing and hieroglyphics were made there. Several thousand years ago, a people whose looks Chinese archaeologists are only vaguely familiar with had been cutting phonograph record like stone disc out of the hardest granite with a set of completely unknown tools. What will cut granite very easily? Diamonds. Diamonds. What else will cut granite real easy? A laser. Is this correct? The 716 stone discs, that's how many graves they found, 716, found so far also have a hole in the center just as phonograph records do. And from there, spiraling out towards the rim are double grooves, just like a CD runs today. These grooves, of course, are not like soundtracks, but rather the most peculiar writing system that has ever been found in China and possibly even in the world. Now, I would think that in some university or college that a professor or a doctorate of ancient prehistory or whatever you want to call it would have had this for his students to be made aware of and to incline them to another level of understanding, okay? Now, a lot of Judeo-Christian ministers and churches teach there is no other life in the universe but on the surface of the earth. And they teach that very strongly. A lot of um, Pentecostals, a lot of the Baptist sects teach that, okay? There's no other life anywhere but on the surface of the earth, all right? Now, next please. It took archaeologists and scientists over two decades to decipher the code on the disks. The contents are so fantastic. Now, this is the Russian scientist again who is writing his uh, thesis and writing his report that the Academy of Prehistory in Beijing didn't want to publish the report of scientist Professor Sum Um Nai at first, and he was backed by four colleagues. Archaeologist Sum Um Nai stated that the groove writing tells of aerial vehicles which, according to the stone disk, existed 12,000 years ago. In one place it says literally, quote, the Dropa came down from the clouds with their air gliders. Ten times the men, women, and children of the Khan hid in the caves until sunrise. Then they understood the signs and saw that the Dropa come in peace this time, unquote. Finds of the Dropa and the Khan races have been made earlier already in these mountain caves. The report continues from the Russian scientist. Archaeologists were and still are unable to ethnologically assign these only up to four foot four inch tall humans. There are no similarities with the Chinese, the Mongols, or the Tibetans. One could, of course, suggest that a few thousand years ago, a Khan literate was playing a joke, or that it was mere superstition when he was talking about aircrafts. But then, 
what does one do about the statement all sensations excluded reported in the other group hieroglyphics of a great mourning or a great lamenting a great mourning a great lamenting about the owns air fleet destruction during landing in the very inaccessible mountains and the lack of means to rebuild it the russian continues the hieroglyphics of the bayan karaula mountains appear to be so mysterious to the chinese archaeology that only very careful scientific use has been made of them on one occasion a sensational discovery had been made the disk contain a lot of cobalt and other metals when testing a disk with the oscillograph a surprising oscillation rhythm was discovered just as if the disk with their grooved writing had once been charged or had functioned as electrical conductors nobody can tell what's behind these 12000 year old stone disks and to complete his report assumptions would be too risky and not objective enough but one is reminded of the ancient chinese tale of the small and slender yellow people who came from the clouds and were shunned by everyone due to their ugliness large wide heads and very slender bodies and hunted by the men with the quick horses possibly the mongols in fact there had been finds of grave and skeleton remains in the caves from 12000 years ago and it's also a fact this is what the russian scientists it's also a fact that these finds classified as remains of the dropa and the khan race carried the signs of a small body frame and very large heads the very first archaeological report tells of an extinct mountain gorilla species but has anyone ever heard of ordered monkey graves and writing tablets in 1940 the archaeologist chai putai was widely mocked for at have making such a claim that chai putai defended himself by declaring that the stone disk had been added to the caves by later cultures this is all rather confusing but it does not change anything about the hieroglyphic mystery of the bayan karal yula mountains which gets even more complicated by the fact that the cave walls show carved pictures of the writing tablets and in several places the rising sun the moon and stars in between whole swarms of pea-sized dots that are descending toward the mountains and the earth in graceful curves next please now that was the report by the russian scientists who evaluated the content of the disk and also the information that he put in writing now in 1995 now we're only up to what don about 10 years 1995 okay a remarkable chinese news report related the discovery of a tribe of 120 people of previously unclassified ethnology in other words they couldn't document the race they don't know how they could have come about okay in the province of shishan i showed you that already where it's located which lies on the eastern border of the bayan kara yua mountain range the most important aspect of this new tribe was the size of its people no taller than 3 foot 10 inches now get this now and the smallest adult measured only 2 foot 1 inch tall I have never even seen a dwarf 2 feet 1 inch tall. Could could you bring that up for me please? I I I'm just having a ruler brought up here. All right. And uh 
you swing that to me, please? Thank you. Two feet, one inch, okay? This is a grown adult. Are you ready? There's one. There's two. And how many inches? We don't want to cheat them. And one inch. That was an adult that they found two foot one inch high. Now, how many of you have ever seen a person walking on this earth in your lifetime, an adult that tall? Not even midgets. Not even midgets. And I'm not saying anything sarcastically about little people. This was an adult of the Drapa. Do you see the, the year up there? What does that year say? 1995. Again, where my finger is, that's how tall the adult was.